So I always go on about how we're in the garden. This is not an allotment, it's not a homestead. It's what in the States they call a backyard. Here we just say our back garden. So it has to be many things. It has to be, well, it doesn't have to be. I choose to have a place where I grow food, but also we want it to be a nice space that we live in. So we want lots of color and lots of flowers and we want areas like this where we can sit out and eat or the area at the back of the garden where we can sit in the sun at the end of the day and relax. So there are things you do that you possibly don't, or at least there's things we do that are a bigger deal here than if you had something like an allotment. So there's a lot of that going on. Um, namely, it's things like the tidying up, the weeding, all of that kind of stuff. The deciding on planting based on what it looks like rather than does this grow with this and how well will that grow. We do things like in this border, what do we see from what angle and what's priority? So today there's going to be a lot of that. Look, for those of you who followed my video about making a journal, um, I have quarters for each week because we work Monday to Friday, so the only time we get in the garden is a weekend. And um, I've used the entire month for today because we're behind, because we've been busy and the weather sucked. Big list today. If you're interested in the whole journal thing, I'll put the link in the description as usual. Right, next job. Okay, let's get it done then. You've seen the shot list. This little guy has been forgotten about for ages. You know you do that thing where you place your plants where you want to plant them and then you can look at them? I forgot about this guy and he's been sitting in his pot the whole time and he's bone dry, the poor wee soul. All his mates got planted and they're all flowering now. <laughs> yeah. So let's do him first so he doesn't get forgotten again. And he's going there, there can still see the indentation. This is something I talk about quite a lot with you guys for any new folk that don't know because it's something that used to scare me and confuse me when I was new and you'd hear all the TV shows talk about teasing the roots when you take a plant out of a pot. It means breaking them up a little bit which is scary but you don't have to like rip them apart it's just a little bit like this. The reason being you want to encourage it to put the roots out into the soil so to go wide and if you just leave them like the pot shape there's a chance they won't really spread so it's how to get the best out of the plant okay we'll see how he does so <laughs> let's have some fun then we'll give this little guy a name There's a long-standing kind of funny. We used to have a dahlia here that was called Doris, the unexpected dahlia, because I had seen it in a shop one day and we were out getting plug plants and just put it in the trolley and Kate came back and she was like, oh, an unexpected dahlia. So what we would do is this poorly little thing, I'm gonna call it Doris so that we can keep doing updates and I can tell you guys how Doris is doing the poor wee thing that got forgotten about. And hopefully it'll really perk up quickly now. And I'll show you, I'll compare her to the ones that are out already and show you the difference. This is one of those reality versus the internet things because I know you guys love this bed and it looks stunning in the videos. But the reality is, because we're up close and seen it all the time, there are issues that I want to get fixed. Namely this. I don't know what you guys can see, but do you see this big gap here? There shouldn't be a gap. There is actually a massive bunch of snapdragons in here, but they're completely shaded from the sun, the, the, the rain, everything, by two things. Number one, there are sea hollies in here that were not the type we thought we were buying. 
they are huge and were not what we bought. So a lot of people, it's, it's a company a lot of you guys had issues with last year and the year before sending out the wrong plants. Happened to us as well. So these are just far too big for this space. So I'm going to take them out because I keep saying this, sometimes you need to really be strict with yourself. They're not doing any benefit here. They're actually impacting on the plant and another plant, so they're coming out. The other thing is I've got this gorgeous big osteopermum here, and there's one here that's not doing anything because this one is shading everything out. So that one's coming out. This is getting moved back into its space, and I'll put that somewhere else. And that then, between the two, might let some of the other plants start to really come on. Now, I mentioned the dahlias. So the poor little guy that we just planted up in there, this is his mate here. Both, these are the ones all sown at the same time, but the ones that are in this bed are just that bit further on because they were planted into the soil and he's been left in his pot too long. You're going to see a lot of buckets today because a lot of tidying. Because you always need a bucket when you're tidying things. Okay. Ah. Oh. Gross, I just kneeled on a snail. Ugh. Right, so it's this plant here with these massive leaves and you can see the diameter of the plant. It's just huge. This is a flower spike in the center and what we've found is it actually puts out a flower shoot that's as tall as this tree and we can't see it because it's tiny in the scheme of things. So I'm not going to just chop it all down. I'm going to take it out. There might be somewhere else in the garden I can put it. So that will be the first thing I try. But if I can't, you know, I'm going to be ruthless. If I can't, I'll give it to a neighbour. Trusty Hori Hori. Let's go. So the aim is to take this out without damaging or doing as little damage to any of the other plants around. So. Basically, you just have to feel your way. You get the hori hori in or your trowel in, whatever you're using, and you're just feeling your way around for that root ball. So many other plants here that are just hidden. There we go. Now the other thing about this, it's crowding everything else out, but because it's covering everything, it's creating an absolute haven for slugs and snails, because it's creating little places where they're hidden, that the moisture stays and it's dark and damp and all that kind of stuff. So we really, I want rid of that. One massive bucket of sea holly. <sighs> Snail. There's two jobs here I have to do, but secret squirrel, because Kate gets jumpy. So I'm going to tidy up all the spring bulbs that are looking a bit rubbish. And I'm going to prune the cherry trees. We've had big clumps of grass that Kate has been convinced might have been a spring bulb. And it's, so it's grass, so I've just pulled it. So the whole point here with the bulbs is, as they pass, they kind of lose petals, fall over, they start to look a bit rubbish. So I want to tidy them up, but there's a trick to bulbs. So at the end of their life, there's two things, you, or sorry, at the end of the flowering, there's two things you can do. They are going to start to look really rubbish and you may not want them in your flower displays when they all start to die back and the leaves are yellowing and things but you don't want to cut those leaves down until that's finished. Because at the moment, even if it's not got a flower on it, it's photosynthesizing and it's feeding that bulb so that you'll get flowers next year. 
So a lot of people will lift the bulbs once they've finished flowering and put them in pots and what have you, so that they're away, out of sight, not making your borders and your flower beds look yucky and untidy, but you can leave them to finish the process before you chop them all down. All I'm doing just now is tidying up. We do have a lot in other places that have totally passed and I'm going to cut the leaves back. And Kate's got a thing she does with the daffodils that have really long, thin leaves that fall over. So I'll show you that as well. So there's nothing exciting here. I'm just tidying up, really. You don't see this bit often because it's not the pretty bit. It's the utility bit with the hose and stuff. But do you see Kate has tied up all the daffodil leaves like this? When your bulbs pass, or the flowers pass, they kind of are unsightly, lots of sprawly leaves and things. The thing is you want to leave the leaves because they're still providing energy and nutrition to that bulb and it's storing all that, getting ready to give you flowers next year. But a lot of people will lift the bulbs at this point and maybe go put them in pots or what have you because it is quite unsightly and you maybe don't want all those leaves. So what Kate's done here is she's tied them all up to make it nice and neat or neater and then when it all passes she'll cut them back but at the moment it means that they're still all there they're still all benefiting from getting the sunlight and not mugging the katinas and as she says they're not mugging the katinas so that's it so if you ever wondered do you lift or do you have to lift your bulbs no you don't have to you can lift them and put them in pots so that you're tidying up but you don't have to you just as long as you're happy leaving the foliage to let it continue to kind of pack on the nutrients and store things up for next year. So things like here, we've got the flowers passed and it's left the flower spike. I don't want it to go to seed because I want it to put all its energy back into the bulb. So I'm going to chop it. I go all the way down to the base of that flower spike. But I leave all of the leaves in place, okay? We don't lift these bulbs, we just leave them in situ. So that's one done. I'll get on with the rest and then I'll show you the next bit. This is one of those horrible ones. So we talk about our cherries, okay? It's just a shorthand. These are actually not a cherry as such. They're a part of the Prunus family, the Prunus triloba. So if I get it right, that's like flowering cherries, almonds, something else I can't remember off the top of my head but they're all treated in different ways. This one, after it's finished blossoming, you'll see it all dies. The first year we didn't understand and we panicked. I thought the tree was dying. But actually what you do is you prune it right back and it'll sprout loads of new shoots and you'll get loads of lovely green leaves. And those are the ones that will have the blossoms next year. So this is gonna look really horrendous. And it's one of the things that I do when Kate's not around because she hates to see it happening, but it's worth it because it'll mean next year it looks amazing. Lots of greens, loads of greens for the compost bin. Need to remember and add browns though. Starting to cook. You remember to water the plants. Don't forget to water yourself. Remember all those snapdragons and cosmos? They're far out here. So more tidying up of bulbs. Oh, but then it's going to leave lots of planting space. So this is where the snapdragons and stuff are going. I'm going to plant up the snapdragons and cosmos 
in places like the pots that I've just trimmed all the leaves back on. However, this is a good point to say, uh, the snapdragons and cosmos, so the antirhinum snapdragons and the cosmos can get quite tall and there's a way to get them a bit bushier, a bit stronger and get more flowers on them. And this is no different than we do with loads of things like we did it with the peppers, okay? And it is basically that you, it's called pinching it out. This is a really quick, simple thing that just has phenomenal results. So what you can see here is these are all those snapdragons that I've been growing. And you can see they're all getting nice and tall and grown awesome. And these are medallias. Now, we're going to do something that is called pinching out and it actually puts a lot of people off growing flowers. I know, Baron, you were saying that you were put off growing dahlias because of the idea of pinching them out. So here's the thing, you don't have to do this, but you will get more flowers and a stronger, bushier plant if you do. And it is simply this. You've got these big, tall, single stems. So pinching out because we would normally pinch out grown tips using a thumb and finger. We're just breaking the soft stems and pinching it away. That's how it got its name. I use my little pointed nose secateurs because it's just neater and easier. But what I'm going to do, and I know this is going to freak some people out, is I'm actually going to chop this right down. So you can see it's got first leaves. You never ever cut to the first leaves. I'm going to go up, there's another set of leaves and then you can see here it's got its branching happening. This is what we're going to encourage. So I'm actually going to cut this right down. You ready? And I'm going to take it all the way down so that you can see here there's about two, four, maybe six leaves. So I've cut that much off it. Okay, I know that is going to freak some people out, but trust me on this one, it'll make a huge difference. They've been hardened off, so they're fine to go out now. I've checked the weather, we're not going to have any cold snaps, it's going to be fine. Now, the other thing you guys may notice when I'm out here, um, is we did quite a lot of work out here the other week. We've totally changed the look of the place. So let me tell you about that then. We have had issues with leather jackets in the lawn. It's been a real nightmare. They're basically the little grubs, the baby daddy long legs or crane fly, and they're in the lawn at the level of the roots and they eat the roots. So we've always had trouble with this lawn, but especially this spring, it's just big, huge dead patches and it just was spreading and getting worse. While we're doing a wee bit of work, we discovered all these grubs. So. I have been out with nematodes, which are a little microscopic organism, and you get them to target different pests. Um, so I got the ones that target the leather jackets, and I did two lots of that over the course of a month and treated the lawn, and it seems to have worked. It's starting to come back now. But this is what we were doing, how we discovered them. Let me show you this. So two main things you can see. The first thing is we've put this little lavender border in at the front. The hope is that it'll eventually grow and become a small kind of hedge, if you like. Um, and the second thing you can see is we've created this nice kind of ornamental border thing under the rhododendron. So how this worked then, we have certain rules and regulations here that we have to adhere to in terms of what we can and can't have in our front gardens. So like I can't grow veg and stuff in the front garden. We also can't have fences and hedges, you know, tall hedges and things like that either, because it's designed to be open plan. But you can have little low things. Now, because it's so open plan, we have a real issue with people walking into the garden, walking across the lawn, especially delivery men, and also dogs that aren't on a lead come running in and do the toilet on the lawn and things. So we just wanted to create some sort of demarcation to just, as a visual reminder that this is the start of a garden. It's not kind of community area or public land or anything like that. So it's just a little visual thing. So that's what we've done there. But in doing that, we took all the bricks out there to make that gap. So that's what we did in this bit. And as you can see, we just dug out the square here and we laid the bricks to match the pattern of the monoblock here. And then we filled it in with some nice white, we call them chuckies, but grit or pebbles, you might call them. Um, the reason we did that was because it gets quite shaded under this rhododendron. And it's another bit of the lawn that was always really bare and horrible. 
and we just thought it makes it pop and looks quite nice. This is just about to flower, so it's going to look awesome really soon. So that's what we did out here. Now I get back to these pots. So these are the antivinums or snapdragons, and these are the cosmos. So this is the stuff you guys have been seeing me sewing and bringing on and putting on over the last few months. So the chance to get them out now. And this is also a good thing to note with these. One of the big things we have to remember, the internet has been amazing and it's made the world so much smaller, but it also lets us see other people's gardens and gardening in different environments. So you need to remember that it's not the same everywhere. So and the reason I started doing this was because here in Scotland, we can't really copy what's going on down south and sort of like mid to the south of England because the weather conditions are really different. So it's good for me to show you where I am and the fact that I'm quite far behind a lot of the other YouTubers because our environment is different. I couldn't put things out until now and some years this is early. So the other thing is also my plants are further behind some of the ones you'll see on YouTubers down south. So don't get disheartened when you compare your plants and your garden to other people on the internet. You don't know what their situation is, remember? Hard day today. Even my water bottle's exhausted. <laughs> Slightly pink legged. Pink nose. Pink necks. Yeah. We should have been more careful. We didn't realise how warm it was. In Scotland. Oh. Be this up. But this is why you do it though. You do all this hard graft. Because then you get this gorgeous, amazing place to sit out in an evening and enjoy it. Do you want to serve? You're only going to make me do that so that if I spill everything everywhere, you can laugh at me. That's just fine. Oh, that's oh, so we're having a gorgeous chicken salad for dinner tonight with gorgeous salady leaves and things from the garden. Because this is why you do it. We're doing well. You haven't spilled any. Don't jinx it. Do not jinx it. My silver service days are well behind me. There's more if you want it. Excellent. Ah, oh, well that is us. I'll let you take us out. Um, I, d I don't have an end phrase. Well, you could use mine. You're presuming I actually pay attention. You missed, gave me in trouble when I didn't do it before. No, I've forgotten what it is now. Look there and wave. See you, folks. See you, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I so thought you would remember. <laughs>